So here we are in John Saratoga. How long have you owned this plane? Uh, six years now. Uh, I use it quite a bit. I do it about 120 hours a year. Preheated, so that should be good there. the PFD and the MFD. Uh, this one is really nice because you can have about five different types of screen. You can flip through these right. and a number of different configurations on them as well. Right. Um, so that's really handy. I tend to keep uh, the top one on traffic and the bottom one on weather. Uh, but you can do terrain, you can do uh, all sorts of different yeah. uh, features there. Um, this has um, virtual the uh, synthetic vision. Oh, so cool. I can actually cycle through different synthetic vision screens, wow. which is uh, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a nice cool. uh, that's a nice feature yeah. to have on that. I tend and, to I tend to keep it on that if I'm yeah. IFR flying. No, right. it's kind of the easiest. So with yeah. this, you also have your iPad. Is that um, you know just for redundancy, or you prefer the iPad over this, or no, how do you how do you? It's really just for redundancy. So yeah. I can um, I, I use Garmin Pilot, oh, okay. and I can put the flight plan in at home, right. and then it will download it automatically. Oh, okay. here. And right. then anytime anything changes with either one of them, it syncs them up. Oh, so nice. that's really good. I'm just going to put the uh, autopilot on yeah. here. And uh, yeah, it syncs it up. So this is the GTN 750. So oh, this amazing. is sort of the, uh, you know, the heart of the whole system. Right. In behind that, yeah. I've got um, Sirius XM. Uh, so I've got the, uh, I guess it's the... I can't remember what the letters are, but it's a 69A. So yeah. I've got I've got the Sirius XM weather. Yeah. So that'll show up. You can actually see in the blue here. Oh, nice. um, that's showing snow. Yeah. On the right side oh, there. Wow. Okay. And if I zoom out more, oh. you can see you know a storm coming in oh, across uh, cool. from the south of us there. Right. So that's really really nice to have. Yeah. Uh, as well. And uh, and I also have Sirius XM radio. So if I go oh, cool. to uh, to music. Right. Um, You've got oh, you've nice. got full Sirius XM radio. Yeah. This uh, in this intercom yeah. panel is great because it allows me uh, under the the entertainment feature there. Yeah. I can send uh, different audio signals to different positions of the plane. Oh. Cool. So I, so you could be listening to Sirius XM and I don't oh, have to. I amazing. can still get air traffic control. Right. Uh, or I can send it to the passengers in the back. Yeah. You could be listening to uh, your phone music. Right. Um, you know, through Bluetooth, and yeah. passengers in the back could be listening to Sirius XM. Wow. So that's, uh, that's really, really, really handy. And was this set up like this when you bought the plane, John? No, you, no. no. Um, they, pretty much everything that doesn't look like it was 25 years old uh, is new. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I, uh, four years ago when I yeah. did the upgrade, yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is the um, ADSB unit in and out. Right. Um, so this is fantastic for seeing traffic. Yeah. Uh, and the traffic also shows up on both of these. Right. On the GTN 750 and also on my iPad. Okay. And the weather uh, from the, uh, the Series X of weather will also show up on here. Right. And on here. Oh. Um, so, so I've got really, really good, um, you know, information coming in yeah. on in terms of graphical weather right. and in terms of air traffic as well. Right. So it's really, really nice to have, especially yeah. the air traffic. Like, uh, and that's got active traffic, so right. I can see any aircraft that's being seen by radar. Oh, they cool. don't have to have ADS-B out. Right. So that's critically important in Canada because a lot of aircraft still yeah, don't have, have ADS-B. Yeah. yeah. So that's really, really, really nice and to have. Is there a radar unit that you have for that or, or a traffic? You know, thing that you have for to do that? Uh, yeah, it's getting, it's receiving all the air, the air traffic control radar. Oh, okay. uh, And then it's, it's receiving ADS, ADS uh, towers, right. uh, as, as well as people's uh, aircraft's direct ADSB transmission. Right. So that's Got basically it. the data that it's that it's okay. getting. So, and do yeah. you use uh, the radar much or no? No, I really don't. No. I mean, it, it would be useful if I was getting anywhere near thunderstorms, right. and I don't go within 50 miles of thunderstorms. No. So I find with this, yeah. um, 
I really don't need that. No. It does. It does work. Okay. Um, you can you can see it's on there. Yeah. Uh, and I can zoom in and out and so on. And I know it works yeah. because you know I have been close enough to storms where I can put it on the 50 or the 100 nautical miles, and I can see the radar strikes. Right. But I find that it's really even though that's um, live. Yeah. So there's no time delay. Right. The time delay now in the Sirius XM is so short right. um, that it's like here it's uh, the age of that signal is two minutes. Right. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. So even if you add to that the normal lag time, yeah. probably two minutes. Right. It's, it's four minutes. So, you know, it, I'm not threading my way between thunderstorms. Four or five minutes old right. is, is, is excellent. That's oh, all I need for my purposes. Right. So I don't really need the storm scope at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and ADS-B weather versus Cirrus XM weather. Is there a big, big difference between those two? I prefer the Sirius XM. Yeah. I mean, I've got both, right? right. Because I've got ADS-B. Yeah. Um, I can see both. I can see the ADS-B on here as well. Right. Together. Um, but no, I just, I just prefer that. I find it's, it's, uh, it's more up to date. Uh, and I just like the graphical display of it a little bit better. Okay. Most people do. Most people, if they have both, yeah. they tend to use the Sirius XM one. Got it, right. Yeah. And, that, and in terms of uh, fuel burn, and uh, do, you have, do, you have a, do you have anything that tells you what the fuel burn currently is? Uh, right here. Oh, right. So, okay, there so yeah, so currently I'm burning about 13 gallons an hour. Right. We, I've slowed it right down. So I've yeah. got my uh, manifold pressure at 21 inches, yeah. and I've got my RPM at about 2100. Okay. So right now we're, uh, our airspeed's about 129, our ground speed's about 133. Right. Uh, normally I would cruise at between 155 and 160. But well, because it's a sightseeing flight, yeah. you know, there's no need to race around. We, no. might, we might as well burn a little bit less fuel. Right. Um, you know, and, and the flight might take five or six minutes longer. Yeah. And is this a uh, 55 percent power or so? Uh, that's a great. I don't actually know. No, okay. I don't tend to go by the percentages. <laughs> so I'm always I, looking at uh, yeah, what, what percentage. If I uh, if I look at my uh, my power chart here, yeah. Um, this will. Uh, there we go. So that's typically what I use, uh, and I can just decide between long range economy and normal. Uh, no. And it'll it'll give me my my fuel burns. It'll give me my combination of RPM and uh, the um, uh, yeah, the RPM and the manifold pressure that I want. Right. So basically, and, and what do you usually target when you're going cross country? If I'm going cross country, I'll usually do 2300 RPM. Right. And then based on my altitude. That'll yeah. tell me what my manifold pressure right. setting and is. And usually cruise as high as you possibly can. Yeah, I usually yeah. go. Yeah, you should go eight or nine thousand if it's right. a longer flight. Um, yeah. You know, it's more efficient that way. And in the event of an engine failure, right. uh, you've got your maximum gliding distance. Yeah, and that's about uh, you know sixteen. Yeah, it's about, I find it about 15 and a half, right. um, and I'm doing about 155 knots, so it's oh, about, a, about a 10 to 1 ratio, right. Tip, pretty typically, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and this is kind of nice here, so one advantage of the uh, oh, cool. of Garmin Pilot right. is this is giving me my glide range, right. okay, so Amazing. it's based on my altitude and it's even correcting for terrain. Oh, wow. Um, so if you're, if you're in a more hilly or mountainous area, yeah. um, you know, it'll it'll correct for that. Right. So if you're in a valley, you know, yeah. you might decide if you lose your engine to do a 180, right. go back the other way because wow. you're going to be able to glide further. Yeah. So that's a kind of a nice uh, nice feature to have right. as well. Yeah. And what is your annual, uh, John? My annual is coming up in March, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty soon. Yeah. Um, in April. And coincident with that is the 10-year uh, overhaul of the prop. are you at right now? Uh, about 1,060. Oh, okay, yeah. great. How about yourself? Uh, 11, uh, 1150? Oh, yeah, so yeah. pretty close.